चक्रतुंड That's what is that one?
Namaste. Welcome everyone to Satsang today here in Rishikesh and big welcome to all the friends and Sanghas around the world who are joining us via broadcasting uh, so that we can be as one Sangha where we are in the world today. So big welcome. And before we go um, further, I would like to say that I haven't really been noticing that there are a few letters that I need to address. So, at some point I'll have to... Maybe now even. I don't... There are so many, not so many. There are some handwritten ones here. They look like they've been here for some time. So it can be the case that if they were a few days ago, by the time it comes now to read them, they're already gone. If we're honest about it. No? So yeah. these ones clearly they come through the broadcasting. And <clears throat> so it looks like, Dearest Guruji, by your grace, I was physically at your feet, and in brackets, in your satsangs, in Rishikesh, for the third week that has just passed. Okay. Many mind games got exposed, such as running after the Guru's form, or ego getting hurt when not seen in darshan, etc. However, very shortly, by your grace, these games were seen because it was clearly seen that you are not personal and you are simply showing us our non-personal true nature as well. If I got hurt, that was a signal that something personal was still there. Thank you for exposing this so clearly by your grace. Thank you, your holy grace for not believing in that which I believed I was, and for showing me what I have always been. You have shown that there is only one, and I have always been this. Thank you, Holy One, Beloved One, we are one, silently in the heart. Your very own heart, Omkar, from Bangkok, Thailand. <coughs> yeah. Very, very clear, no? Very clear letter. Mm. If there was, if I got hurt, that was a signal that something personal is still there. And we have to, even now, as it's becoming increasingly clear what your true position is in terms of the, the experiencing that takes place within the beingness, that uh, I've always been pushing, pushing to say, no, uh, too early, and you're not that, not this. Come, drop back, drop back here. Until you came to an impersonal place and could clearly see the proof of your own existence, of your own true place, and that it is a place of total silence and stillness, uh, free of personal. Uh, idiosyncrasies and so on. So that has been the most liberating, of course, discovering that our self is not the personal, the one who has judgments and these things, that that is largely the mind's games. But out of habit and uh, repetition and practice, we have inherited this bad habit and uh, feeling that it is who we are. And because of that, came much sadness, much hurt also, much defensiveness, selfishness. All of that is born from ignorance of the true nature of ourself. Therefore, satsangs, we have endeavoured not to keep looking at little one-one problem here, because this is how we have attempted to live our life. Little, little problem here, put a little, a little band-aid on this, give me a little pill for this and so on. 
But uh, you have been shown the master key. You've been given the master key that opens all the doors. If there are doors left. And, and so your seeing becomes much more global, more panoramic, rather than the little seeing that operates within the personal mindset of consciousness, you see. What a difference it's making, it must be making a difference. And immediately also, that the peace you're experiencing is not something you're doing. It, 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 is, it is the fragrance, your fragrance, your perfume. You see? Does the flower have to try and, and radiate its perfume? No, they are one and uh, like this. The sunshine and the sun, they are one. The fragrance, which is peace and joy and uh, wisdom, love, grace, silence, this perfume. But the flower cannot be identified because it's not an object. And so for a long time people have been trying to, to see the self. The self cannot be seen. It's not an object. It is the seeing place. Where even seeing is seen even. Even the functioning of perception is perceived. We have looked, we have found there is no tangible object that can be called the perceiver. Yet there is awareness of perceiving. And right there you have been asked to look what is here behind the functioning of perception. Hmm? Who is there, you see? And that became your experience to, to verify are you, you still have the sense I am. But is this now, this I am, is it tangible or intangible? Is it material or immaterial? Is it matter or spirit? Is it object or space? You see? And you have to confess, isn't it, in a sense? Not that there's a gun to your head, hmm? but you, you, the, the game is up, you run out of moves. The mind person. Is out of moves, eh? <laughs> because you, if there's a person, then sure, demonstrate. If there is some object as a person, eh? and then identify. Will the person step forward? The ultimate person step forward. Then the experience uh, became what you are. And yet experiences come and go, but. The what is cannot come and go. And many of you came forward and confirmed it is so. It cannot fade. It cannot go away. You didn't say, I don't think. Someone said that to us, I'm not sure if it can go away. I said, Look again and tell me if we can go. You see, Look again with your entire being and, and, and say, If this can go, how it can go? So here is someone who has re really been listening and understood that if something got hurt, and <laughs> that was the person, not the presence. And recognized this difference, discerned the difference. You see? And thereafter, you know, okay, the reflex or habit may be to go back to the position of person. But now a deeper awareness is activated. And that person won't be able to get away with its antics by itself. A deeper wisdom has arisen now, and to say, uh-uh, no, 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 I can't be that when I'm here watching it. I cannot be that. And go no further. Rest within your own being. So Omkar. Very good. Yes, man. Dearest Muji, I feel the urge to write to you simply to say that my own realization of the truth and journey to freedom culminated in the humbling of my person and emptying of my consciousness through the irritants of lack and limitation, and by having to bear the brunt forces of the ego, the personality, the body-mind, as reflections 
of the content of my own consciousness. A very long sentence, but we got it. <laughs> Tasting the sustained bitterness of those manifestations cornered me to earnestly ask for God's mercy and guidance to empty the consciousness of those contaminants. Thankfully, I was granted the grace to do so, and now the Christ Self has emerged. Or maybe it is more accurate to say that the Self is on an eternal journey of emerging and unfolding. Still, I consider this knowledge of Self to be mission accomplished because I now live and move in the consciousness of the I Am Presence, always here, now, effortlessly, quietly and peacefully contemplating the Self as the pure substance of wisdom, love and glory. And my contemplation – somebody is late, I think they come <laughs> And my contemplation in itself sustains a life force of good in my being, which seems to give delight to the spirit and brings joy to the self. Suffice to say that the pure purpose of this note is to thank you, Muji, for that grace in your pointing, which now allows me to say, mission accomplished. I have found the freedom. Hopefully, I would be counted as one among your good works. Sending you sincere gratitude and divine love from within the pure awareness of the One Self. Patricia wrote this one. This is good. Stay in that. Marinate in that understanding. Deepen in it. It becomes sweeter and sweeter. Don't say much. Be all. Be fully in that. And just a little thing to say. Uh, you say, suffice to say that the true purpose of this note is to say, Thank you, Muji, for that grace in your pointing, which now allows me to say, Mission accomplished. I am tend to want to say, don't say anything. Um, because, of course, something feels, oh, I've been struggling for so long, and now I'm free of this. Hmm? That can be the feeling. Um, but don't make any premature conclusions about any state. Just keep looking and verifying. That's all. Let the state verify itself. You see? Just a wise precaution. Just being with that, be with that, be with that. You see, because the mind also wants to say, "Yay, hey, we have done it!" <laughs> you know, let's crack the champagne. Oh, very good. We've done it. We've done it. And then you, you don't realize that he's come back in to celebrate with you. Yeah. <laughs> you see. So just yeah, and then you're watchful of that. Aha. Uh -huh. No, 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 you out, 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 out. <laughs> you see, which allows me to say, Mission accomplished, I have found freedom. And then you say, Which I have found freedom? Like this, just to last little, you know, when you clean everything, last little. Uh, last little thing, you see, in that. Uh, and yet, of course, it is valid to say it. There's a time when we do say that, and when, when it is questioned or a doubt has arisen inside, it is okay to confirm that I have done it, it is done. But it hasn't got the taste of the person as the accomplisher. It is just, it has been accomplished or something. So, very good. Stay with me there. Da, 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 da. Namaste, dear Muji. Thank for your being. I know you receive a lot of questions and emails. If my email reaches you, I will feel like I won a lottery ticket. I actually never win. <laughs> I want to ask you something about communication. 
you say drop everything, forget the personhood, and that when people speak, it's their consciousness that speaks through them. If consciousness is love and peace, then why there is conflicts arising in communication? It is because of interfering mind activities. Is it because of interfering mind activities or because the level of consciousness is different in different people and they sound like few different radio stations? You see? But it's not really because of that. Of course, I say it is a consciousness that is behind, but once it touches that belief and identification or conditioning, the feeling, I am this person, I am this body, then distortions come because of that belief. And so the consciousness is, is, the, is generating the power behind it, uh, the life force is behind it, but the distinct belief uh, infusion and so on, that is coming from the ego mind. And that has to be cleansed out. That has to be seen for what it is and not identified with. And then gradually the beingness itself will burp it out from here and there, it will come out. That is the fruit of sadhana, that you are in there, not just necessarily once, it's finished. It can be, but it's rare. More that it's repeated over and over again. We hear, you think you've got it, next minute, ah, I've lost it again or something. These feelings are coming. You see, there is some oscillation that happens. Once we have had a glimpse or, you know, somehow a profound insight has taken place, something feels immen immense joy, oh, it's oh, so great. And, but then follows uh, a little time, a phase, where there is an oscillation of the attention, you see. It's swinging towards the person and swinging back towards presence. When it swings towards presence, we're feeling, ah, oh, it's so wonderful, it's so beautiful. Everything feels harmonious and everything, you see. But then it swings out to the person and then, oh my God, no, 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 I've lost it and all. Oh no, no, what did Muji say again? And then it comes back in and oh, very good, very good. All is good. There's nothing existing but I. Then, and so, oh my God, no, no, no. When will this ever end? I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this. Please help me, help me, help me. Back again. Hallelujah. <laughs> so this oscillation happens to our everybody. And yet at the same time, at a certain point, you may be pointed, but both points, both, both end of that and the swinging is noticed, isn't it? Then a minute, you see, but it is noticed then you, something feels a greater space opens up. Where is the witness to that? Is it part of the swinging? Ah, no, 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 no. The witness is looking. Then why is the swinging muttering so much? Because identifying. A mood comes inside and then the mind says, aha, look, we've lost everything. And oh my God, I've lost everything. And it comes back and you feel the feeling of grace and unity and harmony and joy. And, you're feeling very happy, yes, yes, yes. You see? So this is still somehow the the person the person mix within the consciousness is enjoying this kind of ups and downs. But as soon as the weakness to this is pointed out, then it becomes something becomes quiet again. And you see, yes. But that movement is there, it is like an energetic oscillation. It is felt in the body, but now the interpreting tendencies to say, yes, this is happening to me, that is also watched as something that is not necessary to identify with it, and immediately the environment change again, you see. So it, it does take some gradual, some experiencing, mistakes you want to say, if you want to say like that, it's all part of the maturing, for, to help the consciousness, to stabilize, or the mind to stabilize more into the ground of being, is it? Mm. So, do those who are purely conscious ever get trapped in conflicts? They never get trapped. Even if they're in apparent conflicts, something is behind, just knowing, you know, you, sometimes you can have an argument with someone, 
but inside you're totally detached actually. But the argument has to happen, like something makes it happen. But why did you do? No, it was you. No, it was you who did it. No, 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 no. Yes, we saw you. No, 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 no. But inside, nothing. Pure love. Pure love is there. Has anybody experienced? Yes. That even sometimes uh, there's a kind of turmoil, there's some agitation in the immensity of being. But the being is not really disturbed. It's only wave on the surface. Something is okay. You have not bought into it. You have not said, "Oh no, I've lost all." This is mine. Very dramatic, the mind. You see, so something is quietly present, and see these ripples. They are okay. It's nothing. And also, even if something, even if a saint shouts at you, it's nothing personal. Hmm? Nothing personal. It turns out for your good. Turns out for your good. Uh, I remember when uh, account of uh, uh, Shirdi Sai Baba. One certain man, uh, he uh, was a big devotee of Shirdi Sai Baba, and his uh, nephew was staying with him, or he was staying in nephew's house, and uh, the, the nephew was a bit cynical. He was university boy, and he he was thinking, why you keep uh, you know you know worshiping this picture of this man, you know? Why do you do this, uncle? What are you doing? And he says, You know, this is a great saint. Why you should be, don't show any disrespect towards the saint. You see? You should really honor the saint, in fact. You know, if you had the right attitude, he could even help you at college. You're not doing well at the moment, are you? And he was uh, a bit cynical, no? But somehow, it, something touched him. Because the, the uncle said, you should go, go and see. Uh, you go and see the master one day. Actually, show him your, your some respect and approach him properly. And but he couldn't get rid of his cynicism. And strangely, this boy found himself untrained, going to see Sai Baba. He's thinking, "What am I doing? My God, you know, if my friends know that I'm doing this, I'm really doomed. You know, I should not be doing. It. I'm already making fun of these people." And I'm here I am on a train going to see the saint. So when he arrived there, he went immediately to try and find Sai Baba. And he says that as he's approaching the saint's abode, he was a little bit, yeah, look at this place going, no? So as soon as he saw the master, no? The master started throwing stones at him. <laughs> like this, no? And not pebbles, you know? I mean proper stones. He said, whoa, whoa, whoa. He, said, he ran down, he ran away. He said, This man is mad. He almost broke my head, you know, like that. So he, he went back on the train. He told his uncle, Uncle, you know, I really got to tell you, you, this man is crazy. He almost bust my head, you know. I went to see him, you know, and, uh, you know, this is how he behaved. How can you worship somebody like that? It was a big mistake. And so Uncle said to him, Listen, your attitude was not right. The master knows this, you see, he knows this. He's already working on you. He's already working on you, you see? So this way. But after this, he could not get the master out of his mind. Even when he's cynical, he kept seeing. So what happened? Next scene, back on the, back on the train again. Or bus, whatever. He arrives at the place. And then when he arrived there, again, uh, he's coming now, but much more gentle. <laughs> so when the saint, when the master saw him, the master said, Ah, you've come, 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 I'm waiting for you. <laughs> so he became very great uh, devotee of Sai Baba. So the action may seem to be aggressive, but even so, there was no vindictiveness, there was nothing dirty about it. It was totally, it was already, he was getting his first lessons, you know, become more humble, soften yourself, and life will work better for you, like that, no? So, 
So do, do those who are purely conscious ever get trapped in conflicts? Apparently, apparent, but they are not trapped. And does being extremely conscious mean not reacting to anything what is going on around you? Oh, yeah. Actions and reactions may happen, but again, this, uh, the one is not identified with it. He sees that that is somehow the, the, the these things must happen, but they are not deeply identified with that, not troubled by it. So there goes uh, actions, reactions. Does that mean being extremely conscious means not reacting to anything? No, everything is happens spontaneously. But uh, however spontaneous, it is spontaneously also perceived. It doesn't interfere so much to try and suppress the expressions, you see. The only important thing, they have understood the true nature of the Self. And that realization of the true nature of the Self automatically blesses every aspect of the expression, you see. Automatically is touched by that. Not one by one and this thing, no, no, automatically. All good qualities manifest in the awakened mind. Not cultivated necessarily. Also cultivated too, but. Can I one last one for now on this one? We can do. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much for everything. I want to report something awesome, absolutely awesome to Muji through you. I hope you get this message. I have been watching this video for some time on a regular basis and get so many answers to my queries. I sit with myself and contemplate. I watched his recorded satsangs in Rishikesh today in the USA and I felt he was getting a bit disappointed at the kind of personal queries he was getting and in the end he said, I want to eat somebody today. <laughs> I'm still waiting actually. <laughs> he was looking in to the camera and he, I felt he was looking straight at me. <laughs> yes, a take away. After five minutes, so the most beautiful thing happened to me. Eh? I laughed non-stop in absolute joy for over 20 minutes, like a crazy person, after 20 years. You see? He made a breakthrough with me through the TV screen. He ate my ego. He finished my ego today. Please report this to him. I am so, so, so very grateful for everything in this world, everyone, every situation. I am so, 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 so very grateful to the Master in His grace to help me get to me. I hope my neighbors don't send me to asylum <laughs> for being so happy after losing everything and gaining His grace and laughing so hard and crying at the same time. Um, I am in Him, my grace now, in him, him, my grace now and ever, see me. Nice, huh? <laughs> <laughs> laughing, and the neighbors also, you know, what's going on? Maybe they're laughing also. Sometimes the right kind of laugh is very contagious. Happy laughing is very, makes some people upset though. Uh, what are you so happy about? <laughs> okay, somebody. Uh, you will come then. Thank you, Muji. Yeah. I, uh, I, um, I've been. Uh, this will be the last time that I'll be coming here because my, my health is not so good anymore. And uh, your what? My health is not so good. I have Parkinson's disease, and uh, and uh, but but uh, I, I had my thought. Well, I had, I had a whole bunch of thoughts actually, and I, uh, part of it was I wanted to just thank you for what you've given me. Uh, for, the first time I saw you was about seven years ago uh, on YouTube, and uh, it was immediately 
I was immediately uh, attracted to you and, 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 and felt, that, felt that you were the person that could help me. And uh, ever since then, I've, I've, been, I've been committed to that thought. And, uh, and, and it seems to grow and, and, and it's getting, and I, I'm getting more, more comfortable with, with, with the, the, the messages you're, that you're giving us. And uh, uh, so, so I'm, I'm feeling reasonably good inside now, uh, reasonably, reasonably full and rich and, uh, and, uh, and, and not, not, not lacking and stuff like that. And so I wanted to thank you for that. And I had a thought, the thought was, I used to teach transcendental meditation years ago, and uh, it, 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 it was taught in, in a systematic manner to a whole bunch of people, and it was just the way it was done. And it had a certain virtue to it, a certain strength to it. The strength of it was that, that it was done in a, system, in a systematic manner so that everybody got the same teaching. And, uh, and, and, and uh, so I was, I was wondering if it was possible to... Uh, I, wonder if it was, I, wonder, I was wondering if it was possible to to systematize, to some extent, uh, the, your, your teaching. Um, it, 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 and I, know, I realize that, it, that, that, that your teaching is, 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 is very... Uh, it, it has to do with how long How long have you been here this season? How long you've been here now? I've been here about, uh, about a week. About, about a week. A week. Yeah, about a week. Amazingly, in this last week, huh? We, we, have, we have experienced something not like has happened before, that almost every satsang I see like, yes. has culminated into a sort of like a kind of mass awakening to some extent. No? Yes. Some very, very profound, but mostly, I would say, not every single person, of course, but to such an extent that uh, it was very clear, became very, very clear, not just here, but clear in, in the entire being, the, the impact of that recognition was taking place. Can we say like this? Yes. yes. And I'm not relying on people's words only, because the vibration, um, the, the atmosphere created uh, by that um, uh, was so um, irrefutable, it was so uh, pronounced. So much so that even at the yoga festival, which is normally mixed with so many different people coming in, first timers, people who never heard about uh, things, and and uh, traditional uh, yogi pra uh, yoga practitioners, and so on, everybody coming in together, and at the same time there was some kind of or kind of like a global understanding or something energetically. So much so that when we were leaving, I have never left this place. In such silence, the people were so silent. Normally, people go, hey, what you doing? Plus, there was all kind of other things, music and stuff going around the place. So, uh, without calling it systematic teaching or systematic, I feel that uh, uh, the true, true teachings, uh, they come to a simplicity. They should not be complex. The more complex they become, the more individual they become in some way because it will only appeal to a certain type of mindset. Whereas the truth is not a teaching, it is a discovering. You see? The truth cannot be taught, it can only be discovered, you see? So that uh, people with a simple mind like me and so on stand a chance. It's very easy pointed out. And so you only have to be listening and following internally. So this is like immediate sadhana. As you're listening, the clarification is taking place. It's like everything is being peeled away, like the onion skins of mental impressions and uh, you know concepts and belief systems which are not in service to the truth are falling aside, peeled away, until one comes to just this, this empty space. And this empty space is not an inert dimension, you see. It is the very source, in fact, from where uh, this, this entire play, this dance of manifestation is fueled from there. It is like there is an um, invisible umbilical cord 
coming from every sentient being to the source. And they are one. It's, it's not the most perfect picture, but it is something, something like that. So when we come into a universal understanding, whereby it's being pointed out, it's not something you have to learn and study and study and study. If you have to study or practice something, it's only because of the habit to go back to the old regime of thinking. So that habit has to be corrected or nullified to, to allow the effect or the impact of seeing to flourish. You see? But otherwise, it's just a recognition. Therefore, I am not so much concerned to call what I'm, what's happening here my teachings so strongly, but more pointing. The teaching means you have to study and learn and on and on. But for me, it is just here, like you ask how to go to Lakshmanjula. And I just, I don't have to teach you about it. So you just go there, and you took this thing here, and from there, you go straight up, and you know, or if you're walking, you go like this. That's pointing. That's pointing because it's clear. It's not complex. You see? If it's too complex, I have to draw you a map or something. But if you say you want to go to, Sri Swami Dayananda's ashram. I said, oh, I walk you there myself. It's just like, yeah, come, we go. How much distance do I have to walk or to cover to guide you to your own self? So this is the, this is the thing, you see. And I feel it's not because it's complex, it's not because it's difficult, but because there's resistance in the mind. There's resistance because we have a certain loyalty to our personal identity. We seem to have grown up with it. We believe in it. We believe it is a fact, whereas it is seen here as total fiction. But in the mind of the beingness functioning in that body, it is hypnotized into believing that it is a person, which is a, a mental psychological construct. And, and so if there is a strong identity with the body-mind, it would be very difficult for such a person to be attracted to a place like this in the first place. You see? And uh, your concerns, uh, your idea about yourself is totally built upon the, the qualities of the body, whereas uh, the deeper self remains um, unrecognized, un, you know, undiscovered. So something in our life, because all our life is a satsang, in fact. You see, it's slowly, slowly awakening to the extent that at some point it develops into a kind of magnetism, a felt magnetism, like something is pulling, is pulling towards this, this um, great discovery. Everybody's in it. I remember. I'm going to give a, a, an example come to my mind. It's not the most elegant one, because one time in uh, in England we have baths more than showers. I came out bath one time and uh, drying off in the bath. In the bath, now the the plug is taken out, the water is coming out. But having a shower bath in it, now you can see all the the mixture of water and the soap and uh, whatever all that muck basically, you know. And uh, just noticing while drying off, watching that uh, <clears throat> towards the edges at the back, away, furthest away from the plug, the water is one water and it's all going through the plug. But at the furthest point, it just seems to be just not moving, just like this. You come a bit closer and you can feel that things are taking a kind of shape and they're coming and they're being pulled towards the front. Okay, so that felt. But that looks like how it is. Like at a certain point, the the natural pull of the plug hole no? is affecting the whole water. But those at the very, that part at the very back is not really. It's just bobbing up and down. It's, it's not aware that there's a hole and nothing there. To just, you know. <laughs> and the ones here are kind of going, hey, something is. There's something happening here. And then closer and closer, it's like, whoa, we were really going to there. And then as it comes down, whoa, the water is really moving towards this plug hole. And I said, these are the beings now who are really 
they're, they're going through, they're going to the plug hole. It doesn't sound nice. <laughs> So the beings right over the plug hole, at the plug hole, there are some like, like this. <laughs> <They're>, <laughs> they don't want to go through some. <laughs> and they're asking, you know, I have so fear, I feel like I'm going into a black hole, I'm going to die. And so I said, look down and you will see the face of Ramana there. Okay? Then your fear will go. He's smiling, saying, Relax, darling. Come, everything is fine. No? No, that maybe is too is too is it's it's too strong image. But it is like that. Everyone is in satsang. You have come to a place where you are you're feeling now and knowing that there is a power, there's an order, there is an intelligence in life, and it is benevolent, it is good. You see? And uh, the more you turn towards that, the more life seems more harmonious, more joy, more clarity, more wisdom, more true strength like that. Mm. So, uh. so again, when we speak about this, you talk about a systematic teaching and so on, I would say systematic recognition, uh, collective recognition. Something becomes so easy. All the usual obstacles and distractions are swept aside, so that only clear seeing is remain. And even there's no there's no object to be seen. But the seeing admits, you know, the object any object is not my goal. It can be seen. It cannot be what I am. And that it is that the seeing and the being they are one. It's not that one thing is going to get something else. As soon as that one thing gets the something else, that one thing becomes the something it is seeking. And that has been the tone of the last few satsangs. Just pointing again here. Then I was even saying, I don't know what else to tell you now. We have come to end of the road teaching, end of the road. The end of the season, and I still have one more week left. We have a bonus week. How are we going to use this week? Huh? It has to be to somehow that still there will be some sense of, yeah, but this thing is still happening, and, and just to point these out, to look and say, how will you deal with this? So we, 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 are, we are having big advantage to be able to look and say, okay, but. Uh, I'm still finding that this and that, and say, you know, speak from the self as the self, and you will know what that means. And either you're going to laugh and say, I was ridiculous again, is a ridiculously following my mind, and uh, that has to stop. And it is slowing down, it will stop. Or it will be seen to be so insignificant, it will become so insignificant that there's going to come a time when your mouth will not be able to say some things anymore. They're far too ridiculous. You won't say them. Like, you know, again, you know, I lost the self. You know, oh, you, what, what is that? That's nonsense. How can you speak like that? Uh, actually, things are going quite nicely for me. I, even though, even though I, I, for some reason, I don't sound like it. But, um, but things are going quite nicely for me. I, I, I feel a lot of improvement, a lot of. A lot of uh, Sort of release, release of anxiety and stuff like that. Before, if I were to even get up to say something like this, it would be very, very uncomfortable for me. And even now, still some, dis still some discomfort. But the discomfort is, is, is I, I treat it as, I treat it as, uh, as uh, just part of the process. Yes. And, uh, and. Uh, Can I say that even a process that may have to happen, whatever that may be, you know, my call to you is that is to look at what is not a process. Something is being processed, say, for instance. Some activity is going on. And but you are that which is not going on. Have you noticed or not? It's coming, it's coming more and more to the fore. It's, 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 I am becoming more aware of that myself. Yeah. But, 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 but it's, it's happening. It is yeah. Because in the past we have used 
the, the movement of names and forms and the things perceived on this side of the eyes and in the realm of feelings as a measure of how well we are doing and how happy we are. But as soon as you discover uh, that unchanging stillness, then everything is seen to be momentary. Everything is only momentary. And even in the midst of the, 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 the strongest pulsations of the flow of manifestation, there is the untouched stillness, a space that cannot be conquered, it cannot be manipulated, it cannot be damaged, it is beginningless, it is so clear. that in front of it, all this movement is taking place, even the body is moving, things are moving, but it is not moving. Come on. You have to look and admit it's not, it, it, it is true like that. It is not moving, something is not... In, but there is a concern where you locate your identity, what you value to be important and so on, that you will give energy to, and that you will believe into existence, and that will become your experience. But all of this is watchable. All this is on the screen of consciousness. It's a three-dimensional screen, in which you, the perceiver, is also appearing on the screen, also, as one of the dynamic forms that you are perceiving. But inside that perceiver is absolute awareness. And when that is recognized, you are seeing both. And this is why I say, you know, at first we want to, we have a feeling of, uh, you, we want to taste the honey. You don't want to be the honey. But here you are tasting the honey, and you are the honey at the same time. If you follow my example. It's not, don't push this upstairs, don't push it up in the attic, okay? Just, just keep listening and the intelligence in you, recognize it and it becomes a kind of resonance. It resonates with the, with the conscious presence. That's all. It doesn't have to make sense. No, it just resonates. You can learn either through studying something, using the mind to study and to remember, or you can come into knowingness through just through vibration, through harmony, through resonance, you come to know, and it's a much more profound knowing. Thank you. Thank you for yes. being here with me. Yeah. Very, Very good. So again, you see, even here, as we take a moment or so, You hear the sound of some bird. Huh? It just floats into where, where, where is it? Where is it being heard? You know, who is the hearer of it? All these things are being perceived spontaneously. You're not telling your senses, senses perceive. No, they are perceiving spontaneously. They are filtered also spontaneously. They are recognized and all within a harmonious field of consciousness that knows collectively all is well. Where are you precisely? By habit, we feel that somehow our consciousness is localized around the body. And that is true also. But the more you fall this idea of being the person and the shape of the body and so on, and recognize that you are consciousness, that localization of consciousness may still be there, but its radiance becomes very, very far. And the orbit just becomes 
very expanded. Where is the end of you? Where is the edge of your consciousness? Whereby, after the edge, it becomes another consciousness. Is it the size of your body? Hmm? It is in the body, but also the body is in, inside it also. It is perceived inside it, along with other bodies. Is there any distance to the beingness? Is there any separation in the consciousness? Where are you and where are you not? Think as consciousness. Think as consciousness. <coughs> Pay attention to that natural vibration now. Hmm? That vibration inside. Huh? Subtle, spatial, spatial. Silence. Unattached. Joy, peace. Openness. Can the beingness itself can it be ill? Can it become sick? Can it die? You are in the place within your own being to respond to my question. Because you can respond from the authority of your own experience, your own seeing. You see, the focus is not on your person, not what you did yesterday and the relatives, and it's not focused there. If you want to go back to that, you can any time you want. But here, where is that? Of what, of what value or importance is your person's story or something? Yet it is not being cursed. It's not as hard. No, it is just not necessary here. Feel how you are without a story and uh, history.
without self-definition. There's no need to define. Somehow to define is to confine. Why to confine? You are your life. You are life. And also the witnessing of life and to life uh, takes place in your being also. But you, you, if here it is asked, but only you, where are you? What are you? Without story, not story, not ideation, not projection, not the memory of you, not the memory of you. What are you now? Tingling, What do you want? Uh, sound and I think translation also? Namaste, Muji. Namaste. Спасибо, что позвал меня. Какое-то волнение просто сильное внутри происходит. There is some uh, nervousness happening inside of me, quite strong. Yes. Я много думала, голова много думала, о чем говорить. А... My mind has been thinking. А на самом деле я не знаю. Uh, have you been listening to the, your headset? Ты слушала в микрофон через наушники? Да. Yes. You are only to observe these things. Of course, sometimes, as you are being directed, you see, into the true recognition, the mind is going to start sometimes to try and you know to create as much destruction as possible. It's going to throw stones in the bush. So you you. You forgot what you're doing. It's going to do this, and it can manifest all these things: headaches and uh, anxieties. And you just watch them. Let them go. Don't identify with them. Please tell her. Тебе нужно только наблюдать, когда тебе даются указания, и, конечно же, ум начнет отвлекать тебя. Он будет создавать какие-то помехи, как будто бы бросать камни в кусты. Оставайся в покое и наблюдай за всем за этим. Возможно, главная боль будет возникать. Mind is trying to get your attention desperately right now. Ум отчаянно пытается завоевать твое внимание. Да. И особенно в прошлом году я говорила с тобой, и я говорила, что когда я подхожу к тебе, возникает желание сбежать. And last year, I was talking to you, and I was mentioning that every time I'm approaching you, I have this uh, desire to run away from you. Yes. Физически в этом я приехала праве и за этот вот год мы с тобой тогда говорили за этот год в глубине что-то очень сильно расслабилось после этого после нашей нашей встречи с тобой. 
And uh, for this year, for the past year, something has relaxed uh, uh, deeply in me after this conversation we had with you. И все вещи потекли совершенно иначе. And everything just went completely differently. There was a flow. Все, что происходит, очень глубоко, естественно. И если мысли возникают, это все наблюдается и все спокойно. Everything happens just completely naturally. Yeah. And if thoughts arise, they are observed. Но вот сейчас, когда я подхожу к тебе снова, или когда ты проходишь мимо, вот когда тебя встречают, то я вот чувствую это, как это сказать, это сопротивление, и даже это сопротивление очень сильное, и даже я чувствую угрозу, которая от тебя исходит. And now, uh, in your vicinity, and uh, when you are passing by, sometimes I feel like there is this resistance, and it's even experienced as some kind of threat coming yeah. from you. So you have to use it, even this. You have to use it. Say, so, whoa, why is it happening like this? Because something is afraid. There's still something who is afraid that uh, it's going to get caught, it's going to get exposed, or some, something is happening like that. Um, that uh, this actually something is powerfully attracted and something is powerfully wants to get away. And that which wants to get away, you see, like that, actually in one way I can say it is nothing. Okay? In one way I can say it is nothing. But somehow in the system, in your sort of psychological system, it, it is playing a, a fear that if if you come near, it's going to get caught and uh, somehow something wants to protect it. Your identity with it wants to protect it. So, as soon as you recognize that that is not something that you want to defend, more space comes to come forward like you are doing now. No, используй это. Задайся вопросом, почему это происходит? Что происходит? Да, я смотрю на это. I'm observing it. Mm. If, if, если происходит uh, какое-то такое у тебя сильное притяжение, и в то же время тебе хочется убежать, рассматривая это, и то, что хочет убежать, что это? Если есть в тебе какое-то сильное отождествленно с этим, возможно, какой-то страх проявляется. Is, is that the strongest thing right now that's playing? Это самое сильное ощущение, которое сейчас у тебя да. возникает? Да, оно не, оно не покидает, причем это... С первого решекеша, когда я вот вышла к микрофону один раз, и меня, у меня как будто отморозило вообще. И сейчас, я, сейчас то же самое происходит. Yes, and it doesn't leave me. From the very first experience in Rishikesh, um, I felt like I froze, and it doesn't... Then come here now, then. You don't seem so afraid. Сейчас ты не боишься? Сейчас нет, сейчас не боюсь. No, 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 I'm not afraid. У меня какая-то внутри... Something inside. Решимость. I have determination. Determination for what? Решимость на что? Это как внутри, как возмущение. Some kind of like turbulence inside. Вот эта сила, которая боится тебя, она подавляет. This force that is afraid of you, it suppresses. А а изнутри возмущение. And inside, this kind of turbulence rises. Ну сколько можно уже вот в эту маленькую точку ужиматься, когда ты and um, I have no patience with it. I just feel how how much longer can I narrow myself down into the small dot? And if if this turbulence was not there, huh, what would you want to tell me? If this turbulence was not there, what do you want to tell me? 
Если бы этого возмущения внутри не было, что бы ты мне сказала? Слов нет. There are no words. Слов нет. No words. Я прямо сейчас чувствую вот эту борьбу внутри. Right now I'm feeling the struggle inside. Но слов нет. But I have no words. Как что-то прорываю, не знаешь, я не знаю сейчас что. I don't know what is happening. Some kind of breakthrough. Yeah. So don't worry about that. Не, не волнуйся об этом. Yeah. Because you have to sometimes feel all these. Uh, is it enough to to turn you away from freedom? Иногда нужно чувствовать всю эту борьбу, но разве это сможет отвернуть тебя от свободы? Нет. No. So what you want to express then? Что ты хочешь выразить? Что-то хочет, я не знаю. Something wants, but I, d I don't know. Yeah. Что-то не может выйти. Something can't come out. Как проявиться? Something cannot express itself. Is that something you? Это что-то это ты? Did you? Да. <laughs> you can yes. express it. <laughs> ты можешь это выразить. <laughs> if it was something other than you, I would say, ah, forget about it. But if it's you, come on, yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> Если это было что-то другое, то я бы сказала, просто забудь об этом. Но если это ты, то давай. Ну, это самое страшное, что ты можешь предложить сейчас. Но это самое страшное offer, you can make now. Why are you laughing then? А почему смеешься? <laughs> Не знаю. I don't know. Ну, это ra uh, параллельно радость. But if, uh, in parallel, there is joy. There is joy. Она как бы, это вот радость, любовь, она как зажата. This joy and this love somehow it's не suppressed. Не может проявиться. It cannot express itself. Мне что-то хочется так руку твою сжимать. I just want to squeeze your hand. Это как будто любовь, она зажата. It's like this love is suppressed. Я чувствую, я чувствую, что я могу, что это... Вообще but, бесконечность. But, uh, you can it now. Ты можешь сейчас ее выразить. Don't think about it. Не думай. Я что-то думала спеть тебе. I thought maybe I'll sing for you. Не знаю. Что это это, это что-то про любовь. It's something about love. Uh -huh. <laughs> вот такое чувство, что сейчас э, э, что есть шансы, что сейчас вот его вот эти мысли идут, что я могу упустить. The feeling is that now, right now, I have a chance. I can let it go now. Let it go, as in just not. Not be holding on anymore to. Отпустить имеешь в виду не держаться за это? Да. Да. Ну это как-то вот так. It's like this. Like this? Да. Вот это. So it's this or like this? Так или так? Вот отсюда. It's from here. Ah. Так. Unlike this. It's good. Хорошо. <laughs> Это как... Uh, 
Can I have a hug? Может, а, ты хочешь обнять меня? Я не знаю вообще ничего сейчас. I don't know. I don't know nothing. А? I don't know. I don't know I... anything now. Я не, мог... я не могу тебя обнять, мне что-то мешает. I can't hug you. Something doesn't let me. Ну, как вранье какое-то внутри. It's a lie. Ну, вранье, как будто я... Как It's a lie. Я готов. Я готов. А, я знаю. I know. Я знаю, да. Это страх, что... Это страх, что... Э, что ты отвергнешь. It's a fear of resentment. Of? Resentment. Rejection, maybe. Of Resent. rejection. rejection. Это так страх отвержения. Yes, it's a fear of rejection. Mm. Still there now, also? Там еще есть этот Сейчас страх? Сейчас смотрю. I'm looking at it. Рука трясет. My hand is shaking. I wouldn't give so much importance or too much attention to it. I And of course, there's no rejection coming from this way. I know that. Это просто, ну, я знаю, что это идея. Я вчера вот сидела и смотрела, и прям ясно увидела, что все эти ощущения, что вот это просто набор ощущений. I know it was just a thought. I was looking at them yesterday, and I could see it was just a set of sensations. В самую первую встречу ты про это сказал. And, and on, at our very first meeting you said. И появилась свобода такая, только... Только я оставалась. You said that, and I felt the freedom. It was only I that remained. А потом я пошла, и ты, и ты вот осветил мне малу и надел на меня. And then you blessed my mala and you put it on me. И ты меня не, не обнял. And you didn't hug me. Все. And that was it. <laughs> Это такой бред. Big trouble, huh? It's such nonsense. Это такой бред. Я... Such nonsense. Спасибо. Спасибо. Очень хорошо. Это очень похоже, вот как ты сегодня говорил про сливное отверстие. It's like you were talking today about this plug hole. Plug hole. Да, вот эта скорость, она сейчас такая. The speed is now so high. You feel that? Ты чувствуешь это? Да. Yes. Да, сейчас я начинаю видеть это, ощущать это. You are already through. Ты уже прошла внутрь. I see the face. <laughs> I see the face of God. Can I say something? Я просто вот почему-то хочу сейчас поделиться, что я с людьми работаю. I just want to share that I work with people. И сейчас у меня такая благодарность к тебе. And I have such gratitude now towards you. И 
И что я могу вот это проводить, вот эту свободу дальше. That I can be a conduit for this freedom yeah. now. Да, что мне люди пишут, которые смотрят эти сатсанги, с, с кем я работаю. And people write to me, those that I work with, and they watch satsangs. Знают, что ты здесь, и мы как бы для нас это очень реально. They write to me and they say, we know you're there, and for us it's so real. Вот и спасибо тебе. Thank you so much. I'm very happy to. Я очень очень сильно люблю тебя. Я так благодарна. I love you so much, and I'm so grateful. Так благодарна, что. Я смогла встретить тебя. I'm so grateful that I, I met you. Yeah. Это такая милость. It's such grace. Thank you. Спасибо. Thank you. It's important to keep watching the tendency to keep going back towards the old, the old way, the old ways. It's very important to keep watching and don't get sucked into any story because the mind will represent them dressed up in fine clothing and everything. And then you start thinking, wow, I didn't realize that was so nice. And uh, you know, just don't be patient with that. Protect your freedom. Uh, the psychological mind has nothing to offer you here to contribute here. So don't go knocking at that door anymore. Just stay here until, until we are totally cured of those tendencies to, to, to let go of the hand of God, to let go of that our own stability. So they must develop a kind of gravity that keeps pulling your, your attention, to keep your attention here until it becomes effortless. Because what has been pointed out itself is effortless. In itself it is effortless, you see. There's nobody there being peaceful. It is just peace. There is no one there to be, you know, vigilant. But there is a soft vigilance that, that always is aware when something moves away from the sweet harmony and is moving back into, into that. That does not mean you cannot be in the mind also. Mind has different functions. The practical, pragmatic mind, of course, is useful for everyone, even an awakened being. You see, the practical mind and all of this is totally uh, uh, functioning well and even better than before even. But that psychological side, pertaining and connecting up with the feeling of your sense of self, be careful and watch, watch him until you have transcended the delusion which keeps, which keeps this area vague. Vague means not clear. So sometimes you're not sure which is you and, and which is the, that. But just by keeping the attention in, the, in, the, in that state of being, in the feeling of being. And it is not burdensome because instantly you are there, you find you're, you are so happy about it. Sometimes what can happen is there's a feeling of postponing because there's a tendency that in the beingness there's still the sense of the person has not completely drained off yet and it has still got some, some kick in it, some charge and it tends to want to go to feed back in the land of personhood. But much of it, most of it is still in the, in the sense of presence. So this crossing over from person to presence must be complete. Like I say, let it go completely. Sometimes you see when we say the snake is 
is leaving the room. His head is in the garden, but the tail is still in the room. It must come completely out. And it's just a metaphor to kind of remind you that you are just, you are, when you are here as this itself, without personal references, you are in your fullness. You are in that natural state of completeness. You don't need a scale to, to weigh how much you are here. You just have the attitude is complete. You are totally here. And uh, it's easy to see now the tendencies from the psychological mind and the egoic nature. They are less appealing. They, are, they don't have the same um, uh, seducing power. They don't have the attractiveness that they would have when you are stained by personhood and by ego. When I say when you are stained by that, it means that you have a propensity, a tendency to go towards that side. And it keeps you in a state of uh, a very fragmented state of uh, mind. But in your natural state, here, as we are, you know, yeah, there is just. Maybe some of you can follow. Maybe some is just, just bathing in the self. It's like just immersed in the being. And still, on some subliminal level, you are understanding what I'm speaking. And you'll find, surprisingly, you can move in life, whatever you have to do in life. It is not in conflict with the self. In fact, uh, it brings an order to your life in a, in a very good way and uh, strain out the kind of more tamasic and rajasic tendencies. They are, they are being nullified and strained out. Mm. Somebody there want to say something? Thank you, Muji. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Mm -hmm. I will so much happy as well as uh, jealous at the same time for the girl who came and hugged me. Hug you. <laughs> and um, um, just a second, I need to recompose yours. Yeah. Uh, I'm being in presence, and uh, uh, I realize that uh, many things are happening through me. Like I'm just being an instrument in doing something. Like things are happening, and these are just going through me. So uh, a thought keeps on uh, pop popping in my mind. Like, are we responsible for anything or not? Like. Yes, you are. Once you have the sense of yourself as a, 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 as a person, and even with the consciousness also, it's not that, oh, if I'm just a consciousness and my actions are automatic and spontaneous, you know, I can do what I like because, I mean, like, it's the universe doing it. Hmm? If you are genuine in, 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 your, in your, your search for truth, the life will correct you on that one to show you where the sense of responsibility is still truthful. You see, until as you integrate the personal mind into the 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 sense of presence, you'll find that automatically your your way of functioning in life you are it's almost like you have transcended the law because. In a sense, you are acting. Your your life is goodness itself. As it said, that the law is for those who are who are lawbreakers. Something inside is functioning very naturally. Naturally, it 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 has a respect for life. It has a respect for for your own life. Uh, you see, so it moves from that from that harmonious place. So it's not that you're not you're not responsible. We can look more closely at what you mean by that, because in any particular individual case, you may put and say, well, in that particular action, 
you are not really responsible for how people took that, you know. But you can, you see, you can, you can go like this. I would say, as much as possible, I try and keep away from these, you know, sort of personal things, because if you stay in the great, stay in the in the main artery, don't go off into the little veins just yet, because if you stay on the mains, you'll find that you all intuitively, automatically, you will know in any situation what is the appropriate thing in the moment. But ahead of time, uh, it will be more what you may say hypothetical. It will be suppositional or projecting something. But in the actuality of the, of the now, it will be more clear for you uh, what, what is happening. Because it won't come just from your mind in that way. It has come from the beingness which moves, uh, it's, it's, it's communicating in a much broader, a much more authentic way than from the personal mind. I say this for everybody, in fact, because, you know, we may say in situations like that, this is what you would do, but in real life it doesn't work like that. It will come, it will come out from where your beingness is most, uh, where your person is located where your strongest tendencies are, it will function from those tendencies. So therefore, if you're in the harmony of being, your response to life is coming from the harmony of being. Uh, I'm being in being and I do something uh, which I regret later. Yeah. So, in that sense, whether I'm being responsible for the things I have done or it is just the consciousness working through me, it happened because it has to be happened, like that. Yes, if something has to happen like that, then you simply accept this. If you know this, if you're not making some excuse in your person, you simply know that that was unavoidable and something feels right about it, and in spite of people crying and saying, oh, you do, but something feels right and just about it. No, and I don't feel right about it. I feel that something bad has happened. I ah. have done something bad, right? Well, then if you know you've done something bad, don't waste another time, another evening going to bed in an injured state. You try and rectify that. You go to the place and say, listen, auntie or whatever it is, you know, like I, I, uh, the incident that took place, I acted prematurely, I was really being selfish, and please forgive me. Please, please forgive me of this and set it right. But it's not that I have done any mistake also. <laughs> okay, like let's try again. Tell me again what you're talking about. I don't, I don't. Like you have done something wrong, but you didn't make a mistake. No, what? in the heat of moment it happened like, yeah. just like that. Um, anger came or something like that. In the heat of moment that happened. Oh, oh, you hit somebody? You said so like something. I hurted someone or something like that. Uh, because uh, in the West, we're doing that all the time. And I didn't have any control over it. <laughs> <laughs> we accept, you know. We get angry. So, uh, so what? So, and then you run out of room. Uh, and you never apologize about it or something. And uh, you know that it was just spontaneous. It was just anger. Anger spoke. Anger said this thing. And the person to whom it was said felt very injured. They can't be so injured. They know that they themselves say something sometimes when they're angry. You say things which are not true. That's one of the ways that you know that your mind is, is, is a bit of an uh, un, you know, unreliable uh, thing. You are still grieving about that. So if you felt that in a moment of anger you expressed something, you see, and it was just spontaneous, but it was not good, it was not true, you can still go and say, listen, you know, look, I was just angry and I said this, I still don't feel good that I said that, you know, so I'm sorry that it hurt you. But eh? what to do if it has become a pattern like? Oh, you mean regular stuff? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like, if I'm doing something and I want to control it, but it is not getting into the control, it is happening just through me. We have spoken before, no? Yeah.
And I said, this sounds very familiar. No. We Are you still on a, this type of stuff? No, 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 no. It's a year, no? No, we haven't spoke. Uh, I haven't spoken about it. No. Uh, it was the other thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It just smells a little bit like the similar no, thing. No, it's totally different. Totally different. <laughs> okay. I feel that you are giving too much energy to these things. You know, you can be quickly go to someone and say, "Look, I was again. You know, I really want to to stop this uh, this this behavior uh, with each other. Is there a way we can?" You know, look at this together and you know, because I… I have tried that also. It doesn't work. <laughs> but same means, um, like the people are changing, but the pattern in me is same, like… So you are the one not changing? Yeah, I, I'm… like the situations are like that, which is making me respond like that only. Mm. I don't usually like to do this, but can you give an example what you're talking about? Because we, we, are, are we lost or not on this one? I mean, it sounds like a hopeless case to me. I mean, I don't know. What to do. Please let us in a little bit and let us see if we can. Uh, just give me a moment to. Listen, the whole room is awakening. I am also awakening. And you are standing outside with a knife in your hand. And <laughs> I mean, what? why don't you just come inside, love? I'm trying to come inside and I also had the experience of that also, but… Yeah, but… But this thing it, is like again and again coming to me and uh, making me feel that I'm responsible for that and everything like that. Yeah. But as I said, this is the only way that that can stick. Like… It, the, it, the only way that that can stick is that there is playing here a very strong sense of personhood. That is where the trouble starts, not with the other person so much, but the sense of self based upon very strong identity as, a, as whatever. And, um, and that becomes, it's a bit like Velcro, you know? You know Velcro? Velcro is like. <laughs> It's one of those things, you have them sometimes on jackets, you just… for lazy people who, who don't want to zip or button, they just go and it's stuck and then you and take it off. Then your mind is going to become, your person become like Velcro that attracts this type of stuff that just gets stuck and you can't shake it off. That is to do with a sense of person though. And you are able to observe your tendencies, you're ab able to observe your tendencies more than your person because the tendencies are there and they are based upon the vague idea of a person, you see? And uh, without the person, uh, the tendencies uh, don't have that strength. On the basis of the sense of person, the tendencies have something, some ownership. And it's that that really needs to be looked at. You can look at that. And from the place that you're looking, you can see that they are momentary. These moods come and they, they seem to take over something. But there's a place that they don't take over, a place where, you're, where everyone can look from. Even if you feel, oh my God, I don't know where to go, I'm completely, I'm completely, I'm so completely in trouble and so on. Actually, you can say that because there's awareness of it. And if there's awareness of it, it means that there's a space from where there's a looking, the seeing, and the activity that is happening is being seen. And the psychological and the neurological and uh, emotional uh, reactions that take place, all of them are perceived. The more you sit with the pointings I've been making, the more the gap will feel more clear that 
you will see, but it's just another something. And naturally, you'll begin to lose interest in that as you're finding a more powerful attraction to just being the being. So that, I feel, is a very important place. Rather than talking about the problem as though there is a problem, I talk about the one who seems to have the problem. The, 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 one, the identity is the one that makes problems possible. And all problems are personal, in a sense. When I say that, that it's a big statement to make, but the one who experiences them like it's a problem is because you go a bit personal. When you look at something, you may see it as a challenge and you have to work at it, and it may even excite your approach to deal with it. But the minute your person comes into it, it becomes heavy. It becomes heavy, it becomes just sort of so tiring. So you must have lost some sleep over that. It must cause some, some anxiety, some sleep. And you have to find a way in which you can overcome these things much more quickly. Because you can carry them all your life also. And it is nothing to carry something all your life. And actually the, thing, the actual thing that happened like that is finished and gone. But it's being perpetuated in memory and through identity. Is that not a sad thing? It doesn't exist, but it's existing through memory and through identity. And I've seen families sometimes 30, 35 years have not spoken to each other over things like this. Somebody got hurt and, okay, I'm through with you. Ah, boom. And uh, like this, foolish things. This is what we see with the mind and the sense of personhood. Hmm? We are meant to taste that. And it has, its, it has its joys also, because it is consciousness. But it's such a limitation, so volatile a state, emotionally and psychologically volatile. I mean, it's quick to burst into flames and all this trouble come out of it. Coming back into the coolness of being, into the heart of being, is a very, very different thing. So you need really, I would say, I would invite you to just be fully in the exercise don't hold on because it is possible that while it's been offered a guidance to reveal your true nature, you're still loyal to this problem that doesn't even exist. And holding on to this problem stops you from coming fully into the, the realization of the self. Can you see this? We often have this. Some people say, I have four questions. My God, it's the worst thing. I will not take four questions. Condense them into one question. Because what will happen if you have two questions, you know, while I'm answering the first one, you're trying to remember the second one, and you don't even hear my answer. I, I'm, I've, I've watched it. I'm not going to get fooled by that anymore. One question, I think. I'm being in presence, like you are saying, uh, and... And this being in presence, what you're talking about? This, you know, you're in presence. I'm one being foot in, in, presence, in presence. One foot in... Uh, yeah, outside or what? I just want to ask, like, I'm being in presence and uh, if I take some decision and it turns out very bad, so am I not responsible for the bad decision? Yes. Like, it happened spontaneously. Yes. I haven't taken it the moment the stage came as you uh, suggested, like, decision happened automatically through me. Yes. So, am I not responsible for the decision also? If your role in your job is to do a certain thing, and it means that at times you're going to be put in a position that requires you making decisions of this nature, you're responsible for them, for taking them. Or you will bear the, the consequence of your decisions. It is possible that you can be in a corporate world setting and be very intuitive. The very same one is here. You see? Because uh, where in the world it might be perceived that you need to make decisions constantly, it will be replaced by more intuitive perception. And that will make a much more awakened or enlightened businessman. Because uh, they're not coming so much from Canada, but more there's something intuitive. You're in touch with the center, 
And so your gestures, your expressions are coming from consciousness and not having to go through the filter of a person that only distorts them anyway and turn them into decisions. That's why you always find people who are wondering if they made the wrong decision or the right decision. Because it is not a natural process so much. It's a learning thing that must happen in consciousness. But as you become more mature in it, you tend to feel things more and it comes from a greater wisdom that, that looks in a much broader way and come to a much more appropriate or clear or beneficial result than that. So again, on each of your points you make, my pointer is go back to the Self. Be in the Self. Because you're saying that when I, when I, I am in, in, in presence, but what happens when this happens? Well, when this happens, if you're truly in presence, uh, it, it takes care of it. And somehow the result of it, even if there seems to be a mistake that took place, you're going to benefit from this mistake. You will benefit from it. A mistake is only a mistake if you learn nothing from it. So everything is an, en is an opportunity for enrichment. And um, like life is like a play going on. Uh, why this play is going on? Is there any lessons we need to learn, or is there any particular behavior we should learn? Like some values needs to be learned. Like All that. this you have been presented with already in life. You will have to learn, even if you lived on an island by yourself you will automatically develop some, some uh, ability to read your environment well and how to function in that. A natural discipline will emerge in you because of the needs of, the, of your life that will come. I think you are thinking too much. So now can I <laughs> You want to what? Give me a hug? Come then, come then. <laughs> we have met before, haven't we really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. No, no more questions. <laughs> it's her turn, look. Okay. Muji. I need translation. What language? Russian language. Russian? <laughs> yes. Oh. We used to say the Russians are coming, but the Russians yes. are here. Muji, у меня нет вопросов к тебе. Muji, I have no questions to you. Ты на них уже ответил. I've already answered them. Я хочу сказать тебе спасибо. I just want to say thank you. Когда-то ты сказал мне, что слишком много нетерпения во мне. Once you told me that I have too much impatience in me. Да. А и ты и ты сказал, что кому-то когда-то ты пожелал такую мантру говорить за все спасибо. And you told me that once you gave advice to someone to say thank you as mantra for everything. Да. А, и после этого возникали разные ситуации, как бы было, как бы вот внимание уходило в состояние ну, ума и осознанности. Внимание уходило туда-сюда, туда-сюда. And then there were different situations, and my mind uh, would. Uh, travel from consciousness to person and back and forth, back and forth. И сейчас каждый раз я все глубже нахожусь в себе. But now I, I'm, I, I stay in myself, inside of myself more and more. И каждый раз я говорю спасибо за все. And each time I say thank you for everything. 
Приходит ум, возникают проблемы. But then the mind comes and the problems arise. Я говорю спасибо за все. And I say thank you for everything. И uh, это все осознается. Я нас благодарна за все. But it is all perceived, and I'm grateful for everything. Постепенно uh, ум отступает, и я все время нахожусь в основном в своем прекрасном ощущении <laughs> этой жизни. And then gradually mind leaves, and then I remain in my beautiful state, in my conscious state. И мне не важно, что происходит вовне. Кто что мне говорит. <laughs> мне мне хорошо. <laughs> and then it's not important uh, what people say. I just feel good inside. Uh, и, и нет уже этого нетерпения, что хочется побыстрее осознанности <laughs> и просветления. And then the impatience also subsides. I don't feel like I want enlightenment as fast as possible. Мне хорошо, этот цветок жизни, он раскрывается постепенно. I feel good and this flower of life uh, it, it blooms and it opens up gradually. Я благодарна этому, и пусть оно будет так, как оно должно быть. I'm grateful for that. So if it has to be like this, so let it be like this. Thank you. Thank you. Well, one little pointer, huh? sometimes you say when then the mind comes mind comes and then it comes with problems and so on and you say thank you thank you thank you uh, that that may be fine if it works there but um, also if you're in this state of unity and then mind comes and it's presenting some things as problems uh, you don't have to immediately say thank you thank you thank you you can just be quiet just just be Quiet and be aware of what it is speaking. But you are not in the acting or reacting mode. You are in a state of stillness and you can listen to it, you see. And in your silence, in your stillness, you can better evaluate whether that problem is true or not. And you don't uh, disturb your peace. Это хорошо. Одно маленькое указание. Ты говоришь, что ум возвращается и возникает проблема, и ты благодаришь за все, что возникает. Если это работает, то хорошо. Но, возможно, когда это происходит, оставайся просто в покое, постарайся и так поступить. Возвращается ум, возникает проблема, а ты пребывай в покое, полностью в присутствии. И ты можешь посмотреть потом, являются ли эти проблемы истинными на самом деле или нет. Я пребываю в покое. Просто э, иногда что-то возникает в жизни, происходит. Кто-то из родных уходит. Есть что-то внутри, что наблюдает это и находится в тишине. Есть ум, который страдает. Я нахожусь вот в тишине, я вижу, что что-то страдает, и вовлекаюсь иногда вот в это. I do stay quiet, but some things happen in life. Uh, for example, relatives uh, pass away, and uh, something in me is still and quiet and observes everything, but my mind suffers, and something suffers. That is okay. It's natural that if a relative or a friend pass away, that some grieving is going to happen, some feelings, some deep... Uh, uh, some deep emotions will be stirred. Mm -hmm. It is natural that that happened. They don't try to suppress these, let them happen. But still, even in the, even in the presence of these deep emotions, there's the, the stillness is also there at the same time. So let both be there. You see, that stillness is, you cannot underestimate it. It's the most powerful thing. It makes everything fine. It puts the silence Everything becomes a natural expression in it. Ну это естественно, конечно же, если кто-то уходит из жизни родственники или друзья, то мы горюем потом по ним. Не нужно это подавлять. Пускай это выражается. Но при этом есть покой себе. Этот этот великий покой. Ничто не может быть более великим, чем этот покой. Yes, the consciousness needs to experience all these things. It needs to experience grief, not just joy, you know. They actually deeply feel the grief, but especially feel it inside the, the, the great beingness. 
it, it, it gives it more, more depth, uh, more, more, more truthful, it is an enrichment to your experiencing. So don't deny it, let it happen. It doesn't replace your awareness. In fact, you, you could not perceive it if you were not aware. So it's, it's be free in everything, let it happen. But you'll see that, you know, here always, now something is always here. This that is, is always here. It's the non, the non active place, and there's the active consciousness. And experience inside the realm of the active consciousness. And at the same time, that is sitting in the lap of the great awareness at the same time. They are, they are one. Пусть все происходит. Это также выражение самой осознанности. И таким образом осознанность испытывает свою собственную глубину, всю свое богатство, свою собственную истину. Но одновременно с этим, на фоне того, что происходит, есть глубокий покой. Как будто ты сидишь на коленях у Господа, и ты все это наблюдаешь. Спасибо. Okay. You know you are, but what you are, you cannot, you cannot touch. You cannot, you cannot photograph it. You cannot show it. It is not an image or possess any qualities that you can say, by this you will know it also. And yet it is the most real thing here. It alone remains unchanging, complete. It gives life to life. And life takes care of life. And be one with it. Just be one with it. That's all. It will show you how to love it. To appreciate it, to recognize it. When I say recognize, I mean a kind of non phenomenal recognition. You are standing in the place of the I amness itself. And in the heart of the I am is the absolute. You may not be able to comprehend that just with a cerebral mind, but with the intuitive mind, you're already, you're already on your way. You're already, you're already in the heart of, of being. So don't have to figure out life. Nobody can do it. But be life. And it will reveal its mysteries. in accordance with your capacity or with its wishes, you see, which is no other than you. Gradually this sense of the independent you, who seems to hold a sense of separateness from the totality, that independent sense of you will gradually merge, just merge, in the totality. This merging in the totality is still in the dream, but it has to happen, because there is only the One, beyond even the concept of oneness. It manifests as two and two and billions and trillions, yet it is only the One. 
That is the highest realization. And it is a realization that is already awakening in you. Your part is simply to surrender to it, to welcome. Based upon what you have tasted already, if the taste is pleasant, then welcome the taste. You say, come fully. It is similar thing happened for me. On the taste of this, what I call the kiss from inside, I felt I walked out of my life, if you understand what I mean. Life was not a bad life, it was okay, it was, a, it was not a boring life. But this showed something else a depth, uh, a power, a joy that was inconceivable for who I felt I was at that time. It totally flooded my being, engulfed my sense of self, and uh, I had nothing to offer back. But the little I conceive myself to be. The same one that absorbed me is here absorbing you. It's the timeless one. It's the only one acting through so many different names and forms, it's the same one. So, thank you. Will we have some music today, some music? Water, 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 water. I would like that after the music, you know, I want to share something with uh, some of you, if you can stay back just for a couple of minutes, then uh, I would appreciate it. You know? If you have to go, you will go. Very simple call and response song, so feel free to join in with full hearts. And thank you, Guruji. Thank you so much for this song, for your pointings, for everything.
Sitaram, 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 Jai Sitaram. 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 Sitaram, 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 Jai Hanuman. 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 Sitaram, 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 Jai Sitaram. Sitaram, 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 Jai Sitaram. Sitaram, 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 Jai Sitaram. Sitaram, 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 Jai Hanuman. Sitaram, 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 Jai Hanuman. Sitaram, 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 Jai Hanuman. Sitaram, 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 Jai Hanuman. Jai Sitaram, Jai Jai Hanuman. Jai Sitaram, Jai Jai Hanuman. Jai Sitaram, Jai. Sitaram, 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 Jai Hanuman. 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 Jai Sitaram, Jai 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 Jai Hanuman. Ram, 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 Ram. Sitaram, Ram, Ram, Ram. Sitaram, Ram, Ram, Ram. Sitaram, Ram, Ram, Ram. Hanuman, Hanuman, Hanuman. Sitaram, 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 Jai Hanuman. Sitaram, 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 Jai Hanuman. Sitaram, 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 Jai Hanuman. Sitaram, 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 Jai Hanuman. Jai Sitaram, Jai 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 Jai. I'm a 
Sitaram, 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 S
<clears throat> thank you, thank you. I want to ask your, uh, for your attention a little bit on something I would like to bring to you, something that's very close to our hearts. And um, one of them is that here in Rishikesh, we've been coming to Rishikesh now for some time. Myself, the first time in Rishikesh was uh, in 1993. It was one of the first places I discovered in India and come here. And um, I want to speak to you a little bit about one project that's been operating here. There's one uh, woman, uh, Sri Prabhavati, she's here. Could you stand up for a moment, please? She's been, for me, a champion of uh, actually amongst uh, those who have really come to really render service uh, as she found uh, was needed when she came here and found that there were many children who really were not going to school. Some of them were homeless or uh, just living in very poor situations, poor, poor conditions and so on. And she started a, a charity, a place to, for these children to come and live together and to go to school together. And to, she, she actually uh, made a family of these children. And this has been going now for some years. And it is called the Romana, it's called, I've got it here, the Romana Garden. Some of you are aware of it. And everyone who has gone there has been touched by it. They grow their own vegetables and the, the children go to school there. Everything is done there. And it's the most loving place. And uh, Prabhavati has been the, the leading figure there amongst some very beautiful beings who have come together to, um, to ensure that the the, the project uh, continues to support the children into school. Some of them have moved on and really have accomplished beautiful things in the world and have come back also to support uh, the, the ongoing um, care for children. So uh, I felt to myself to, to bring some light to that and to really be, to show our gratitude and our support to her. And so um, I wanted to bring this uh, to your attention. And uh, the second uh, one I wanted to bring while I'm here, last year also, we introduced that one of the places we, we spent a lot of time in satsangs were in Tiruvannamalai, where I spent some years there also. We conducted satsangs in this south of India, uh, near Chennai. And we held satsangs there for a number of years before coming to Rishikesh. And one of the things that I actually found while I was there, I was invited to come to one place. And when I went to this place, I found the most touching, touching scene there. Because I came to realize that had come to a home that was set up for children with AIDS, HIV, cases of children, some very young, some babies also, some children that were also abandoned because of this. And uh, just it was very, very compelling uh, story for me to, to find out. And these children were brought together and uh, into one place. And uh, this project also began with Mr. Charyon, who is here right now. I'd like you to stand up and see this man. And also uh, Sharmila. Where are you, Sharmila? You're there. And Kalpana. I think Kalpana is the one there. They brought these children, made home for them, along with also uh, many girls in some rural parts of the India who were really um, abandoned by their family or were married off young and were abused and just really in, in desperate um, states of being and made a home uh, for them. And again, in a similar way as in uh, Ramana's school, um, they, they also educated these children, cared for them, I've never been in a place I felt it was so loving that the children, even the ones who were uh, very um, sick and so on, there was a shining radiating with such love and such warmth and so, so much gratitude. 
And uh, I, was, I was just left speechless at the care and uh, this was the love in action that uh, we speak about. And these are beings who had dedicated their lives to taking care of uh, these children and uh, I felt that it was a very worthy cause to give as much support to. So last year when Mr. Charyon came here, I introduced him and I asked uh, those who were coming here if you felt inside also to support them. And they are now since then a father they have had an easier way to accept uh, donations and so on. So on behalf of these two projects I'm introducing to you today, if it is felt by you where you can support them or find out more about the projects after satsang today, there will be a place provided. I think it, where, where is it located in the space? At the entrance for the place um, for both these um, uh, charities, which I feel they are so profoundly loving and progressive and educational for children who otherwise would probably be overlooked. And uh, so I ask that you turn your attention a bit to them and uh, also to, if you, where you can give, please give generously where you can to support them. So this is what I ask you to stay back for because um, it is part of our, our, um, our presentation and the life that uh, we, are, we are all searching uh, for freedom, but inside this also is our care for uh, life, not just always. And also, we have animal projects in uh, Tiruvannamalai where we bring attention to and support them as well, where it started off uh, the animal project to protect dogs, so many dogs were being killed and so on. Now it became bigger than that, so even monkeys Injured monkeys and cows and, and every every birds also are being taken care of there. So, but uh, I just bring these to your attention today and ask that you uh, you turn your attention to that and uh, continue to move in the spirit of what has been revealed inside your heart. Continue to move with that whatever you are doing. Keep your attention centered in the beingness. And so somehow you continue to marinate in these revelations, in these realizations, to build up until it becomes effortless again, as it was in the beginning, before the beginning. So my blessing to all the beings in whose heart is pulsating for truth and for freedom that each one will come to the full realization of the Self in the heart and be timelessly free and happy. And that your way in life, your path in life will be radiant. And that whoever meets you on the way of life, that they are touched by your openness, your love, your wisdom, your stillness, your joy, your fun also. And that to such an extent that they are inspired, compelled to search within themselves to discover the light that they see in you. And so that this, the truth, the love for truth, the love for life and God becomes contagious again on this planet. I'm not sending you out on a mission or something. Be as you are. Be as you are.
so happy that that you get me grace to meet you.
you forever. Thank you. Thank you.
Muchas cosas no por acá.
Thank you for what you opened me to. <laughs>
music in my heart. <laughs> music in my heart. Music in my heart. Thank you very much. <laughs>